This is Ty Cats Today. It's a very special game day edition of Ty Cats Today. It's Digital Host Louis B. Thanks for checking us out on the Ty Cats Audio Network. And uh, just a few hours away from kickoff, well, depending on when you're listening to this, uh, we're a few hours away from kickoff. And Ty Cats in Ottawa to take on the Red Blacks. And looking forward to uh, being in the booth alongside Courtney Steven, who's with us now. Courtney, uh, filling in for Andy Fantuz, who's on the call with RJ. How you feeling? First kind of first broadcast for you coming up today. You know what, man? I've been doing my homework for a while, honestly, uh, probably about seven, seven, eight years now studying the team. So, man, I'm ready to go. I'm excited to get in there. Okay, let's talk about this because if depending on where people are listening, it, hopefully, you know, maybe you're in Ontario, maybe you're not. But if you're listening in Ontario, there's a good chance you're under some sort of heavy rain watch right now. And that's no different in Ottawa where it's supposed to be kind of miserable. I played softball in the rain last night. I didn't like it. I couldn't imagine playing football in the rain. As a former player, what do these conditions kind of do to you, knowing that you're going to be playing in a wet game like this? Well, you know, if you're on offense, it's a lot more of a concern than if you're on defense because you got to protect the ball. You know, when you carry the ball, you carry the team. That's what they say. So um, on defense, our mindset was, you know what, maybe there's a slight increase in the chance of that ball popping out. So we're going to attack. We're going to go for it. We're going to be trying to rip, strip, and pop that thing out every chance we get. And on offense, it's uh, after the play, don't don't drop the ball on the ground. Pick it up. Give it to the ref. Make sure that, you know, we're giving ourselves the best chance to have ball security because when the ball's wet, you know, if you're holding it, you're going to be thinking about it a lot more than if you're trying to go get it. I feel like this these conditions kind of fit the Ticats game plan in that, you know, little runs, little chunks, three, four yards at a time, get the job done and, and, you know, minimize the, the, the downfield chances. And I mean, we haven't seen David Watford throw downfield much. Uh, He had that one shot deep uh, in in the game on Friday, but I feel like the conditions almost favor the Ticats the way they want to play this game. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, we saw them run the ball more than we've ever seen a Ticats team run the ball, had about 30 attempts there. So um, definitely the, the short throws, the quick throws that are going to help the O-line. You know, you got a young O-line in there. You don't want them to be in play action, pass protection, or any five, seven-step drops that are going to have the quarterback in the pocket for a long time. So getting the ball a short distance, get it out in the flats, hand it off, um, and just really let the playmakers make plays quickly, I think it's going to work perfectly for us. Dominique Navis comes into this game. Uh, he's four and eight. Uh, we know the kind of numbers he as – as a former guy in the secondary, did you look at – did you look at quarterbacks numbers and say, Hey, this guy might be prone to throw some interceptions. This might be a chance for me to, uh, to maybe pad my stats a little bit. I mean, I feel like you, you look at the best quarterback and you feel the same way because you, you got to think that it's all about you. And especially on defense, it's gotta be all about you and understanding who you're going against, but knowing that um, it's another opportunity for you to execute your game plan. So it didn't matter if we were playing Henry Burris, Ricky Ray, or some guy off the street, uh, the replacements. It didn't matter because uh, every game was a chance to pad your stats. But more importantly, um, with a quarterback that you know has a little bit less experience than somebody that you're uh, used to playing, um, you, you're going to want to try and confuse them, give them different looks, make it hard for them to diagnose what defense you're in and where to put the ball. Because if you could put a little bit of hesitation into that quarterback's mind, that's going to help the pass rush. That's going to help the linebackers in their drops. And eventually, maybe one of those DBs will find a little extra. And, and that's something Coach kind of talked about this week. And I, I have to imagine that's kind of a, the Ticats way is that, um, you know, even scouting their opponent. You know, the the coach had said, you know, I'd be lying if we said we spent even half of our time, you know, focusing on the opponent. We're focused on us. We're focused on how we can be better than we were. You know, it doesn't matter if we're playing a team that's one and five. It doesn't matter if we're playing a team that's five and one. The the onus is on us to be better than they were last week. Absolutely. And, you know, on a short week, what can you really do differently? You have to go with a lot of the same plays that you've repped for uh, the previous weeks. Maybe some coaches, they actually build out their playbook and they don't use 100 percent of it. So you've got some plays that might not be on film that you'll be able to run. But ultimately, you go back, you see how they might scout you based on your last games because that's the film you've been watching over the last few weeks so you try to take those mistakes off of the film you try to fill in some of those gaps and um, really enter the game with just enough of a game plan change that 
you know, you give yourself a chance to win. No reinventing the wheel in a, in a short week. Uh, Courtney, of course, you were the Ticats nominee for special teams player of the year in 2018, I want to say. Um, but you obviously had a big role on special teams with this Ticats uh, group. And when you look at them now, how big of a factor do you think special teams are going to be in a game like this where conditions aren't going to be great, where we saw the Ticats force two t- fumbles on coverage? Uh, you know, Frankie Williams is Frankie Williams. Do you feel like this is a game that offense and defense are almost going to cancel each other out and it's going to come down to special teams? Special teams is always a huge factor, especially when you got, you know, potentially five all star caliber players out on offense. Um, you're going to want to move the field position through special teams, potentially even score on special teams, you know, whether it's blocking a punt, you know, there's a severe chance of losing the game if you have a punt blocked, but also if you're able to score on special teams, you greatly increase your chances of winning the game. So the explosive plays, that's what we're going to be looking for. I'm looking for, you know, a matchup of the the return men because you got Devontae Deadman, who we know is one of the most explosive players in the CFL. But on our side of the ball, we also got Frankie Williams, who without a shadow of a doubt is probably the brightest star shining for the Ticats right now. I mean, the guy's scoring points. He's locking down receivers on the other team. Um, it's going to be interesting to see who wins the field position battle and who can corral the other return men and make sure that they don't give this Ottawa team a spark where they don't need one. We were talking to this about Jeff Reinbold on Ticats today yesterday, and, you know, he had kind of put it into perspective, you know, just how incredible it is what, what Frankie's doing. Uh, you played in the secondary. You, you've, you've been back there. How incredible is it what, what Frankie's doing to, 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 to play in these tough matchups and then have to go and kick every – or return every kick, punt, and out there? Like that's – it seems like – it's hard to explain, but can you try to explain it? It's a little bit like the football equivalent of running a marathon. You know, (laughs) as a DB, you could be in a run play and everybody else sees that it's a run play. But if you're in man to man coverage and your receiver runs 40 yards down the field, your job is to to check that man all the way down the field. So you give your all and you run and you come back on the next play. You run. Same thing. And then third down comes. And all of a sudden now you have to catch the ball with 12 guys barreling down on you and don't drop it and then see how many yards you can get. So it's one of those things where to do it is one thing, to do it at the level that Frankie's doing it is a whole other thing. So we're really watching somebody who's had a streak of some great games put together. I'd love to see him continue it through the season. He's somebody who really takes pride in his craft. So, um, you know, just making sure that you don't try to do anything crazy. You do your job. And when you do your job, that's when you become a great player. And that's what we're seeing with Frankie Williams. What do you think it would mean for this team to get to the halfway point of the season, you know, seven games into a 14 game schedule, considering, you know, the start they had, but also the schedule that they had the, the two games on the three games to start on the road, you know, in Winnipeg for the banner raising in Saskatchewan for their second game. I mean, not making excuses for the team, but four games in 17 days to wrap it up the, for the first half year. What would it mean to this club to get to above 500 first in the East at the halfway mark? It's, it's always good to have a test early in the year because then when you hit that final stretch and go into the playoffs, that your team is battle tested. And when the playoffs come, there's no more rookies. And that's something that in a short season is going to be even more apparent. So getting guys experiencing games, getting guys in hostile territory, playing on short weeks, dealing with all the adversity, those are things that are going to make you gel faster and they're going to make you reach your potential a little bit earlier. So to see them in midseason form, that's something I'm looking forward to because, you know, Playing all those games back to back, all those short weeks, it forces you to grow up and get better. And, and we're going to see an even better tie cast team in the back half of the season, I'm sure. All right. So, Court, what is your uh, game day routine going to be for your uh, your first tie cats broadcast today? You know what, man? I, I was thinking about it. I used to, before a game, uh, eat a pack of Skittles or some Starburst, you know, just listen to some music. But um, quite honestly, I have no idea. Like, maybe we should go grab some food or something. Well, I mean, you're in the office now. I'm uh, not at the office. I'm not sure if people are asking where I am, but uh, we'll figure it out. I'm looking forward to the call tonight. 6.30, we'll be on the air. We'll be joined by Jeff Avery and speaking with the enemy. Uh, we'll get some uh, – we'll, we'll have uh, Rob Hitchcock with some alumnus analysis. We'll have your car star keys to victory. So, uh, Court, rest up. we got a big night ahead of us. Uh, looking forward to, to seeing you in the booth tonight. I'll bring the Tim Horns coffee. I'll see you there. Love it. That is Courtney Steven. This has been Ticats Today, game day edition. We tuned in at 6.30 on the Ticats Audio Network. 
That's uh, TyCats.ca, the TyCats All Access app, and 900 CHML Global Radio.